Hi, I'm Eric LeClaire, back with another technology upgrade for your vehicle. Today we're going to be using our plug and play integration kit to integrate the Stinger Heighten multimedia infotainment system into this Chrysler 300. When we're done the installation, the Heighten's 10 inch touchscreen HD display is going to sit right between the factory air vents on the dash. We'll replace the hub in the center console with our media hub that has aux input, HDMI, and dual USB for connectivity like Android Auto, CarPlay, and lots of other great features. This kit is all plug and play, so we're not cutting any of the factory wiring. It does require a bit of routing through the vehicle. So we rate this install a three out of four Pry Tools on our install difficulty scale. To begin the installation, we're going to remove the control panel below the radio. Click on the little storage door to open it partially. This allows space to get your fingers behind the panel to pull it forward. Using a nylon pry tool, carefully pull the panel forward. Use caution not to damage the dash. Press in on the lock tab and pull the connector to remove it from the panel. Next, we're going to remove this large trim panel with the air vents. Using a nylon pry tool, pry up on the bottom edge of the panel. Carefully work your way up around the sides to remove the whole panel. Unplug the small white harness plugged into the back of the clock. Using a Phillips screwdriver, unscrew the four screws securing the OEM radio display into the vehicle. Pull the display out of the dash so you can access the connectors on the back. Press in on the lock tabs and pull to remove the connectors from the display. The main harness has a lever style connector. Press in on the end of the latch, then rotate it 90 degrees away from the radio display to disengage the harness. Now we're going to remove the panel with the shifter by using a pry tool to pry up on the back edge of the panel, then work around it to remove it. On the bottom of the panel, there's a black connector with a red locking tab. Slide out the red locking tab, then press in on the clip to remove it. Remove the two Phillips screws at the front of the center console. Remove the two bolts securing the parking brake into place. Lift the parking brake up and disconnect the cable from the small clip on the console. Now remove the small pocket with a 12 volt outlet by pulling the pocket toward the back of the vehicle. Disconnect the small white connector and the 12 volt connector. Now we're going to remove the lower trim panels from the sides of the lower dash. Press them outward toward the sides of the vehicle to remove them. You can use a pair of pliers on the inside of the panel to squeeze the fastener a bit and push it out. Disconnect the USB connector from the passenger side of the console. Remove the two Phillips screws at the bottom of the console. Open the center console and remove the storage tray to access the four bolts on the bottom. Remove the four 10 mm bolts. Lift the entire console to access the two connectors under it. Disconnect the large and small gray connectors, then pull them away from the air duct tubing to release their fasteners. Now carefully remove the console from the vehicle. Now we're going to assemble the mounting hardware. Notice that the mounting bucket is stamped with top near the top edge. It's also labeled LH and RH, indicating left hand and right hand sides. We're going to attach the side bracket marked LH to the side of the mounting bucket labeled LH. Install the spacer into the LH side bracket in position one. Then we'll align that with position C on the mounting bucket. Then install two number eight by three quarter inch Phillips screws. Repeat this process on the side of the bracket labeled RH. Now we will connect the harness to the radio replacement interface. The connectors are keyed so they'll only fit into one location. Plug in the main 20 pin connector into the module. Plug in the radio connector, the power connector, and the audio connectors into the module. Plug the audio connector into the appropriate port, non-amplified if your system is not factory amplified, or the factory amplified port if your vehicle is amplified from the factory like our vehicle is. Plug either end of the 10 pin to 10 pin harness into the port labeled expansion port. Plug the other end of the 10 pin harness into either one of the large ports on the pack link. Pass the included zip ties through the mounting tabs on the mounting bucket. Then loop them back through. Repeat this process with all five zip ties.
Now place the radio replacement module behind the mounting bucket. Pass the zip ties through the mounting tabs on the module, two on each side, and secure the zip ties loosely. Once all four zip ties are installed, two on each side of the module, then zip out the rest of the slack, securing the module into place. The fifth zip tie is used to secure the wire harness into place. Connect the two display cables into the back of the Hyten. Pass the free ends of the two cables through the rectangular opening in the mounting bucket. Align the screw holes with the holes in the assembly. Secure the Hyten into the assembly using the two M5 by 10 screws, two on each side of the Hyten. On the underside of the console, you will see several connectors. Press in on their locking tabs and pull them to disconnect them from the media hub. Using a flathead screwdriver, press in on the latch tabs on the sides of the media hub. There are two tabs on each side. Press on the back of the hub while pressing in on the latching tabs to remove the hub from the center console. You may need to tilt the hub to remove it. Now we will install the cables into the media hub. Be sure to remove the protective caps from the cables before installing them into the hub as they will be difficult to remove once assembled. The cables are keyed so they only fit into their correct locations. Pass the cables through the grooves in the back panel. Then slide the cables and the back panel toward the front panel. Then snap the back panel into place. This completes the assembled media hub. Route the free ends of these cables through the opening in the center console, down through the bottom. Notice that the media hub is keyed with an alignment tab. Align the tab with the hole and snap the hub into place. Route the cables along the factory wiring, securing with zip ties as you go. Now this is ready to return to the vehicle. Now let's assemble the display. Place the heightened display into the display bucket. Flip the whole assembly over. It's a good idea to have a towel or a soft surface down to not damage the heightened display. Then install the four black Phillips M4 by 12 screws from the heightened hardware into the back of the display. Using a pry tool, remove the trim panel on the driver's side of the dash. Then remove the two Phillips screws securing the lower dash panel. Pull the panel toward the back of the vehicle to disconnect the retaining clips. This gives us access to the CAN bus connection on the driver's side of the vehicle. The CAN bus connection harness has a set of green connectors and a set of white connectors. These should be routed through the opening in the dash where the Hyten will be installed, to their respective locations. Route the green CAN bus connectors to the driver's side and connect them into any open port in the white row of CAN bus connectors. If there are no open connectors, which is rare, simply remove one of the OEM connectors, then insert our male connector in its place. Then reconnect the OEM connector by plugging it into the female connector on our CAN bus connection harness. Disconnect the chime speaker from the bracket. Attach the double-sided tape to the mounting bracket. Using a screw or a screwdriver, make a hole in the tape for the screw to pass through. Remove the adhesive on the other side of the tape and attach the bracket to this factory bracket, passing the bolt through the hole. Attach the nut on the back of the bolt and tighten to secure the speaker bracket into place. The double-sided tape and fastening one bolt securely should be sufficient enough to hold the chime speaker into position. However, if you want to be even more secure, at this point you can drill a second hole and install the second mounting bolt. Reinstall the speaker and then install the two thumb screws, one on each side and tighten them to secure the speaker. Reinstall the lower dash panel and reinstall the two Phillips screws. For the CAN bus connection on the passenger side of the vehicle, we're going to use a pry tool to remove the trim panel below the glove box. 
There are several tree fasteners that hold this panel into place. Then route the white CAN bus connector through the dash down to the opening below the glove box. Up behind the glove box is where you will find the green row of CAN bus connectors. Plug our white CAN bus connector into any open port. Again, if there are no unused ports, simply remove an OEM connector, plug in our connector, then plug the OEM connector into our T-harness. Then reinstall the lower trim panel and reconnect the fasteners to secure it into position. Place the GPS antenna inside the dash and attach it to this large metal bracket. Following MECP best practices, we're going to take the excess GPS cable and make a loop. Then we're going to twist the loop into a figure eight and fold it back onto itself. Then using some zip ties, we'll secure this loop. This will help cancel out any electromagnetic field that the coil cable would create. If you choose to install the optional extended microphone, attach it to the top of the A pillar then run the microphone cable down along the weather stripping down the A-pillar. Now using a dash snake or long zip tie, attach the cable and fish it through the dash to the radio opening. Then reinstall the side trim panel. Pull the cable to the opening in the dash. Then zip tie the excess cable to keep it clean. Carefully reinstall the center console into the vehicle, routing all the cables up through the dash to the radio opening. Pull out about 10 inches of cable so you have enough to connect. Zip tie the excess cabling in the front of the center console in the lower dash. There's plenty of space to stash the cables. Be sure to reconnect the two gray connectors under the center console and the gray connector on the passenger side of the center console. Connect the FM antenna adapter into the white FACRA connector. If you're retaining satellite radio, plug the satellite radio harness labeled SAT01 into the blue FACRA connector. The other end of this adapter connects into your SXV300 Sirius XM tuner. Plug the two USB cables into the back of the height. Plug the AM-FM antenna adapter into the antenna lead. Connect the HDMI cable into the height. Locate the pink wire labeled SpeedSense on the 10-pin multi-camera input harness and connect this to the pink wire labeled SpeedSense on the main harness. Plug the 10 pin connector into the back of the height. Plug the small white plug with the 3.5 millimeter connector labeled Mike into the height. Plug the male connector we routed through the dash earlier into this connector until it snaps into place. Plug the 24 pin AV harness into the height. Connect the yellow RCA labeled reverse camera into the yellow RCA labeled reverse camera input. Ensure that the green parking brake wires are connected together by connecting their bullet connectors. Plug in the small six pin steering wheel control harness into the height. Connect the small module labeled RPA-VA1 into the six pin plug labeled reverse cam VA1. Plug the black four pin plug from the CAN bus connection harness into the four pin plug on the main harness. Plug the blue FACRA GPS antenna into the back of the height. Plug the 16 pin main power harness into the back of the height. 
Connect the red, white, and yellow RCA connectors from the media hub into the RCAs labeled aux in. To connect the main vehicle harness into our main harness, ensure that the latching tab is straight up. Plug the harnesses together and rotate the latching tab down 90 degrees until it locks into place. From the 10-pin multi-camera harness, locate the 3-pin connector. Connect this into the small port on the pack link. Carefully tuck all the wiring and cables inside the dash so that you can install the assembly into the original mounting location. Reinstall the four Phillips screws to secure the assembly into the dash. Reconnect the harness for the clock and snap the dash bezel into place. Leave just a few inches of these two cables out to connect the heightened display. Reconnect the harnesses on the back of this panel and snap it into the dash. Plug the two harnesses into the back of the heightened display. Align the four mounting tabs on the back of the display bucket with the holes in the mounting bucket. Then slide the display to the left. Once in position, install the locking screw on the top side of the display to secure it in place. Well, that completes our installation. We've now upgraded to a massive 10 inch HD touchscreen display, which is awesome for viewing the factory reverse camera. The center console has the auxiliary audio in. Now it has an HDMI input and dual USB ports. The Heighton also integrates with the factory steering wheel controls and integrates with the factory amplified system in this vehicle perfectly. To check out all these vehicle features in action, watch our feature video. We hope you've enjoyed this install video and found it useful. Thanks for watching.